and the other one was going to be loose. And I was going to use mortars and tenon joints. Well, I've decided that the fixed joint, which isn't going to be loose, it's going to be mortars and tenons. And the other one that is going to be loose sort of lends itself to using, um, well, the domino downer. But I don't know if you remember, we glued some wood up, we did. So let me just show you. But yeah, so we glued this timber up here. I've still got problems with my cameras. They were all working literally five minutes ago, and then they've all just sort of start, uh, started to fail one by one. And I've been left with two. So unfortunately, there's something wrong with this computer, or maybe it's just um, power, quite possibly. Anyway, we glued this up um, last time, if you remember. And um, let me just get this back up so I can see what's going on. Yeah, so we glued this up. These uh, three boards got glued up. And they're just three bits of volley board. The volley board's what we use for um, shutters in France. Or France. And um, they're quite, yeah, they're 27 mil thick. So for what I'm using for, they're an ideal thickness. That's, what, that's one of the reasons why we use them. And so I've glued these three up. So one part is going to be the, uh, the bottom rail, and one part will be the top rail. And the top rail will be slightly narrower than the bottom rail. That is pretty much the plan. Unfortunately, that camera's not working, and that camera's not working. They were working five minutes ago, and now they've stopped, which is rather annoying, I must say. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to get on top of it. But... Hello, Duke Engines and Mad Monk 33 and Susan DeWitt and Byron Services. Hello there. Did No, it's, no it did not, I can show you. It's completely and utterly, um, yeah. Probably what I'm going to be using it for is uh, a bulking agent now. Not actually as uh, cascamite padded red wood glue. As you can see, all that's happened is the water has dried out of the glue. The um, active ingredients in that cascamite that was in that tub. I need to test it actually what's in the bag and see if that's okay. Because um, that might still be okay. We'll see. But that's completely you know, the, that's useless. <laughs> Absolutely useless. So I'm on the PVA. So um, it's not that easy to get here in France. I haven't seen it here at the moment. Um, you, you can buy small quantities. But I used to buy it by a 20, 20 I guess adults. I used to buy it in a 25 kilo uh, sack. Um, which I showed you in the last, uh, not the last stream, the stream before. So yeah, no, that ain't great. Because it's flipping expensive. <laughs> so um, anyway, so we've got these um, three boards here. They're going to be split down into the sizes that I want. And the reason why we they're going to be a lot, lot wider than the actual height of the door is because we're relying on the height of this dry white board. That happens to be over here. Yeah. So that's going to be the infill panel. So it gives me a dry white board and um, a frame around the panel. That's pretty much it. So... um. I'm not going to be streaming for too long, no more than now, because I've got to walk, walk the dogs. But hopefully we can get this jointed, or at least get the joints made. Um, because then, you know, I can put it on one side and let it dry, can't I, for a start. Now, one side is going to be dry fit, so in case I need to remove the dry white board in the future. And the other side will be, um, a, you know, a, a, a glued up joint. Yes, one will be a dry joint, one will be a glued joint. And the dry joint will be held together with a big screw. Or well, maybe two, I don't know, yeah, in each in each joint. So um at the moment as you can see that's too wide. Right? But the height I've got for the actual dry white board, which I did write down, is eight sixty. I'm gonna just double check that, make sure that I'm not making mistakes already. That wouldn't be the, that wouldn't be the first time that I have. So let's just double check that that is eight sixty thereabouts. Yeah, eight sixty. Um, plus I've got to trim it a little bit as well. And the width is, is a bit wider than I need, so it isn't too bad. Um, so what it does do, though, it allows us to have more joint area, uh, you know, to make it a stronger joint. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, but first of all, I need to rip these down into size. Let's double check I've got enough room here. Make sure I have actually glued them up wide enough. I hope I have. Yeah, yeah, plenty. Plenty there. But in fact, they're too wide at the moment. So I'm going to split this. I'll split the difference with these. I'm going to make this one slightly wider than that one. So we'll, we'll rip that down in a second. Now they're just but glue, yeah, just literally glued together. There's no, um, I haven't put any, uh, like a, uh, like a slip in, like a tongue groove or anything like that in there. It's just buttered up and glued. And, th and that's fine for the job we're using it for. If I was using it outside, I most definitely would put a, um, slip in. You know, uh, usually I put a bit of, um, hardwood, Run a, basically have a groove on either side 
Keep a groove on each face and then have a little join in between. Just a slip of hardwood normally. And that stops water penetration. But we don't need to because it's inside. So I'm not going to worry. If I was doing it for something else, maybe I would be more concerned. But I'm not. Because I'm not. It's uh, in my house. I'm just going to rip this down over there. So that saw over there. I'm swing you over to the table saw. I can't bring the camera over there because it's gone dud again. Swing that over. Oh, it's such a mess again. I just keep um, doing all sorts of different jobs. I keep digressing into other stuff. I'm going to try and use hand tools as much as I can, um, within reason. Other than that, we'll um, use power tools. Bring it back. Come back over here, you. Yeah, what are you doing over there? That's it. I mean, what, that camera there is on the microphone stand. Now, that one's been okay. Well, it's on a short cable, so the cables don't help because you lose data through the cables. And some of them, like, it's right over there, and the other one's right over there. And it hasn't been a problem. Everything was working fine for a while, and now it's gone to pot. And I've just cleaned the, uh, I've done a, oh, cleaned the registry on the PC and what have you, and that hasn't helped. So I don't really know what to do at the moment. My next thing, I suppose, is to change the power supply. But everything costs flipping money, doesn't it? And, you know, um, I can't really keep spending. Do, 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 do. Because you need money for that. <laughs> right. Or well, at least we don't have a mortgage, so is that to it? Do, do, or rent. Right, so, these are too long. I don't know if you remember last time, I these two rails, top and bottom rails, are too long. And what I did was, um, I made them slightly longer to allow for joints on the end. But first of all, we need to clean these up. There's various ways to do it. One, I could just run everything through the thickness. Uh, I could even just sand that flat, to be honest. Um, but one way we used to, well, used to use a lot, in the olden days, would be a cabinet scraper to get rid of the glue first. So some sort of scraper. Now, a cabinet scraper is literally a piece of, um, well, it's sprung steel. You can make your own from an old um, hand saw if you like. That'll do the job. But I have a couple up here. In fact, I'll use that one. And basically, it's, it's actually sharp. It's just square steel, sprung steel, and it has an edge. And you create that edge with, a, with another a round steel, but also, um, in fact, you basically polishing the edge 90 degrees perpendicular to the, to the side and that creates a burr and it's the burr that um, is the cutting edge and how you use it is you literally got to hold it like so and you bend it like that yeah my hands aren't that great so i do struggle with it because i'm um, a couple tunnel lark isn't much fun you could use a hook scraper or a scarston scraper um the scarston scraper is a scraper that has replaceable and um, blades in it um, or a hook, like I say, a hook scraper, or a triangle scraper, and it'll do, it'll do the same job, but you're more likely to dig it in. Yeah, my hands aren't that great for this. I could do actually a bigger one, actually. So I'm just removing the excess glue, because if I run it through the planer, through the thicknesser, that glue will interfere, and you could just sand that off. I could say you could use a triangle scraper. Like I've got a beer. Bum, 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 bum. I want to get remote control for these cameras as well, but not a lot of point until I can actually get them working properly. So anyway. That is a lot sharper. So I don't want that glue interfering with whatever I do with it next. And it might be just a case of sanding it. Take a bit more of that side, that face. Or I can just you even use a hand plane and clean it up a little bit with a hand plane or flatten it with a hand plane. Do that one as well next. Hope that isn't bleaching out too much. That looks better over there than it does over there. Might be my screen actually. Blowing out the highlights. I want 
dee 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 dee. But it's pretty much the same way as if um if you're going to be gluing up a load of boards for like a tabletop or something, you end up with a load of glue squeeze out. So you could use your um scraper. If you've got a lot to remove, you could use a uh, scrubbing plane. I won't be because be, I'll be taking too much off. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you could just use a little block plane like this one. But go, you don't go along with the grain, you start digging with the grain. You have to go sideways. Because your, your blade will be trying to f follow the um, grain. So I tend to go like, that way. Diagonal. Let's read a bit closer. There you go. So I go a little diagonally like so. Which is way too steep at the moment. Hence it dug in. I should normally you check to make sure it's not too deep. And also got a lot of cross grain eggs is not. That just flattens it. Just in case. Also that is You've got a skew on there, and at the moment it's pointing in the wrong direction. So the corner's digging in. It's tight. Oop, too far. That's it. But you don't go with the grain, because that's what happens when you're with the grain. You literally just got to go sideways. So all I'm doing is flattening it in its width. But I don't take too much off. Or just run it through the thickness and do it that way. Which I'll probably end up doing. But if we do that on that, I've got to do it on all of it. Because everything becomes thinner. I don't really want to do that on all of it. Still, it's okay. This face here, this one. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, I've got two of my videos demonetized. No, two videos that are doing really well as well. I nicked the video from um, Channel 4, Question Time. That was my hyssop video on the other channel, it is. And it's um, demonetized. So there you are, you think you're doing okay. <laughs> and they put, you know, really annoying because so many people reuse content that's online. But because it's not technically news content, it's a debating show, isn't it? It's considered as copyrighted. So, um, yeah. I kind of knew that before I started, to be honest. I was expecting that. But I thought because I cut it all up into bits, I was hoping that I wouldn't get noticed. But the YouTube algorithm didn't notice it. Obviously, it was, it was what they call claimed. So... <laughs> I do wonder sometimes why I bother with that channel, I really do. <laughs> so you could just do that, or we can run it through the thickness, and I think that's what we'll do. But we'll have to put all, all the pieces through the thickness, then, like that. So I'll go over here. Quite handy on that camera on the swing arm actually that works quite well that might actually alleviate the, one of the cameras which might mean it'd be less of a problem i am guessing <laughs> as you do doesn't that look like round there you go so lighting cameras all that stuff is all you know all, it all makes things tricky when you're trying to do this because obviously you've got to remember where everything's pointing all the time i haven't got a camera crew you see you, you, no you say no what do you mean you've got a camera crew I couldn't tell. See yeah, right. <laughs> right. Start. Start. Just skimming it. I don't want to take too much off. I just want to make sure 
it's flat, but also um, it's uh, getting rid of that Hardly anything off each car. It's getting better. And again. So because the grain's going in opposite directions, it's getting a bit of tear out there. Okay, I'm happy with that on that face. So now I need to put the other bits through as well before I, adjust, or before I change the depth of cut on this fixer. But these two pieces also are going to be brought down to fix a little bit. Now I'm going to bring the cut down a little bit more to screw it, take a little bit more material off. The cut is on the top, but you bring the table up to the cutter. Obviously, you'll make sure you don't cut the same face again. Bane. Probably took a bit much of that. That's right. Right, when you actually check and all your pieces of timber, that was not working, so I might as well move that out of the way. Um, are the same thing, and still put it on the bench, you think, oh yeah, that's okay over there, what have you, but your bench might not be flat. So if you look here, I've got this edge here, I've got this edge at the end of the bench here, I use it as my guide, so if I want to check for thickness, I just make sure if I push everything down at this point, yeah, that's okay. Make sure they're all the same thickness, make sure you pass them all through the planer together. Otherwise, you're going to have a situation where you can have some different thicknesses than others. So that's okay. That's good. So I'm happy with that. So they've all passed through the planer. It's fluffed some up a bit, but I'm not worried about that. Because I'll aggressively sand that later. Yeah, that's what you do. Aggressively sand it later. Oh, hello. Oh, I'll put you up there. Who have we got here? Hello, context. Hope you're well. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Right, so. Now. Oh, Duke Vengeance. Hello, Duke Vengeance. I hope you're okay, my friend. Hey, you put down that front flap. You look like Sherman. Oh, well, this foot is... Well, okay. All right. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. All right, Watson. What a shame. What do you mean, what a shame? Hello. Uh, did the cask like come... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no that's what it is a shame. Yeah, I think I'll check the rest of the bag later and see if it's... It was just a what because that stuff was in a pot. You see, it might be just stuff in the pot. Maybe the air got to it. So what I do when well, I use the bags, I roll them up, and I'll put like uh, big clips on them, and put them usually just yeah you know, inside the bag, the bag inside the bag. So hopefully it hasn't gone off in the bag, but we'll see. I believe you put. Oh, 
Oh, I, like I believe if you put credited, then the channel or program, then it's okay. As lots of other YouTube channels are doing that. Yeah, I've done that before. Another one that I didn't get, and I still got, um, because the second time, no, several times this has happened, actually, especially with channel, um, channel 4 News. It's not that. It's not the crediting or what have you. It's that they want to claim money. They want to earn off it. Um, obviously, if you do news content and stuff like that, you're supposed to be credited. But I'll tell you what gets complicated is when you do mashups and you've got so many flipping little tiny clips. And I just, it's just, just I'll, I'll be absolutely honest with you, it's just too much work. It really is too much work. And I, I'm earning an absolute pittance off that channel. It's only really the donations that keep me going. And it's, um, it really is. Because the earning off the views, the amount of views I get on that channel is just. It's, it, it makes me wonder whether it's worth it. It really does. I, you know, I don't want to be in here because you know, I, I enjoy playing in here and I'm in here anyway a lot of the time, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know. What to, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. Hello, Giraffe. Ginger's Giraffe. Don't worry. Ginger's Giraffe has not been chewed up just yet. No. <laughs> Ginger's Giraffe on a B-Day. What? What B-Day? I was watching a documentary on the B-Day. <laughs> Why would you watch a documentary about a bead day? Well, there's a lot of bottoms in it or something. Maybe. Washing your bits. No? Oh, dear. Uh, it was talking about why... Why you don't use them in the US? I don't know why we don't use them in the U UK, to be honest. They're quite commonplace in France, and we're considering fitting one. You can get ones that actually adapt your existing toilet. You know, like an auto-wash. <laughs> Oh, so there, yeah, Duke. I know, I mean, you know, so the weather doesn't help either, does it? You know, or oh, it's been very nice today. It's been very sunny today here in France. So, yeah, it's not always easy, I know. But anyway, let's try and cheer you up. <laughs> what about making a big, um, a big mess of what I'm doing? That, that might cheer you up, mightn't it? No? <laughs> right, um, so now we've got our piece of timber. We've got our rails. And we've got our styles. Yeah. That's it, sort of like that. Just three, four inch nails and it'll be done, won't it? Perfect. Now we've got great joints. But also we need to work out how these joints, or whereabouts these joints, are going to be in relation to our pieces of wood. So there's a top and there's a bottom. It doesn't matter which way around it is at this stage. The other thing we've got to do, we've got to put some, you know, grooves in the wood. I'm dead. Not grooves, yes, grooves in the wood. Right, now I know that the height is uh, 1067. If that's 10, well, that is exact. Fractionally over, that's quite good. I just remember that when I'm doing it. Yeah, fractionally, so I've done 1070. Um, so what I'm going to do is mock this up so it's sort of in the right place. Yeah. Um, but equally, I've got two. So two of these joints are going to be fixed. There's going to be two mortise joints. One here, one here, and one here. And on this side, they'll be dry. There'll be like two um, dominoes in there on the other face. And this is just so I can disband that. So we need to create our grooves in here. There's various ways we can do it. I might do it a lazy way. Well, there's various ways. We can do it, we can do it with... Uh... Oh, where is it again? I can't even see it. Why can't I see it? I can see one of them, but it's not the one I want. You could use something like this little rotor plane, like that. That's a possibility. The only thing I'd say is, well, not sharp enough. You could give it a go. I haven't used it for years. The only thing I can't create... That, are you, I'll tell you what, I'll have a go using this on the uh, rails, not the styles, or the ledges, not the rails. <laughs> no. Um... Although I should really be doing it all together the same. No, I'll have to do all this. I'll probably do it on the table saw. Um, or a router. But being that it's uh, not a standard width, it might be easier just to do it with the uh, table saw. So, this panel that's going in there, I've got the thickness of the actual panel itself. This just looks like it's on a bit of a saw of it. Some nasty MDF stuff. Right, so that is oh, about nine millimeters thick. But then also, 
I want to put a backing board in, even though it isn't quite wide enough, so we'll bodge that up to suit. So that was 9mm, so how thick is this? This looks about 3mm. And that is 3mm. So that's 12mm, so if I give it about to allow for any movement, and we don't want it tight, I'm going to do it 13 millimeters. We need a slot in here. It's got to be 13 millimeters wide, which is literally that. It's quite a big slot. Yes, I could. Um, oh, oh, I've got. The only thing I don't like about this is because it's really, going to be quite a fix. That's not right. That's not. That's nine. It's near eight. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to do twelve millimeters. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is normally I'll have a nice recess here, but I can't. The only way I'm going to get a nice recess is if I go if you put a rebate in the back, which you could do. But then every time you look at the door and open the door up, you're going to see a bit of an untidy back to the door. So that's why I want to have a slot in it. So it's going to have to be a slot. So we can put a 12 mil slot on the inside of this, um, yeah, on the inside of this, yeah, where this rebate's got to go. Not rebate, this um, channel. Or rabbit. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. And it's got to be half inch. Now, do I have any half inch cutters? Well, the answer to that would be no. I don't have any half inch cutters, which is a little bit of an annoyance. Right. Now, there's various ways of doing this. I'm going to try and do this in the simplest way possible. But I... F Ooh. Should I use a router? I will use a router. And I'll tell you why I'm going to use a router. Because then I can... Do you know what? I'm thinking, though. I'm thinking. I'm going to join it and put the slot in afterwards with the router. And then dismantle it. And install, then install it. So we're going to join it first. That's what we do before we put the slots in. That's what I'm going to do. Now, there's a reason why I'm thinking about this now. It's going to make the the mortises easier. Because if I, I if I put a slot all the way through here, I'll have to haunch my mortises. So basically, a part of the mortise joint will make up a part of the slot. Otherwise, you'll have a gap going through from end to end. So we're not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it an easier way. Yeah, I'm going to put the slot in afterwards. I think it's going to be an easier way. So first of all, we need to work out exactly whereabouts or how deep our mortises need to be, you know, in relation to our timber here. So the mortises are going to be going into the wood here. Let's bring you a bit closer. Do you do 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 a little bit? I get a little bit closer. A little bit. You can't zoom those cameras, which is a bit annoying. Um, so I need to work out how deep my morse is going to be. I did say about 60 mil, I remember, aren't I? Or if no 50 mil is what I was going to do, wasn't it? Right, well, first of all, we need to... Right, we know that way, we know that way. Bum, 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 bum. Lay a little egg for me. Right, so that has got to be 610. So once we've worked out on one, that will be replicated on all of them. So I just mirror it. So once I worked out exactly where the shoulders of the mortise and tenon joint are going to end up. At the moment, let's go that way a bit. So that's 50 mil. And that's 50 mil. So all I'm going to do is I'll transfer that mark onto here. Where that, you know, where it, trans where it uh, intersects. What inter Oh, Dev, you lot are so rude. No, so just transfer that there like so. I'm using my square, and I can just put a mark here. Right up like so. And do the same on that one. So now I've got two marks, one there and one there. So now I know that is going to be the same length on both of them. Otherwise, our door is not going to be the same. So I'm going to grab... Um, maybe one of these grips might just do it, do it, just to make it easier to transfer the marks over, like so. So I just use one of these grips if I can squeeze it tight enough, just hold that in place, and then I can 
transfer the, the marks across both of them. Let's for a second. I'll transfer those marks across both of them using the square again. And then I'll transfer those marks all the way around the ledges or rails. Do, 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 like so. And then like so. So now we've got the length or the internal distance between uh, you know, these two styles marked onto these these ledges. But now we want to transfer those two those marks all the way around. Remembering one thing though. One you see I'll show you in a minute, that'll be easy, I'll show you in a minute. That's got an RC dot in, so that's gonna be the back from now on. So this is gonna be the face. So I'm gonna put an uh, an F on there. Uh that's gonna be the face. And then the grooves are in on the inside, that's good. So that is pretty much the way round it's gonna go. So now we can transfer our other marks, these marks, all the way around. Now if the ends are cut true, you could use a marking gauge and to uh, you know do it that way. Oh god, I only saw um Vladimir Putin this morning. Oh my god, that was weird, that's surreal. He was making his speech he was and you know normally when you see these speeches, you always got people there twiddling their thumbs, fidgeting and falling asleep. Or like the last, one at the last Chancellor of the Exchequer rocking in the church at the funeral. You know who I mean. And um They were just sitting there. They were, no one was looking at the mobile phones or anything like that. Or, yeah, one person there who was holding the mobile phone and recording. Oops, there I moved it. Um, but that's bizarre. But they were literally just like, you know, it's like a zoo. They're like those seals. I was expecting them to go, yeah. You know. Just oh, it's very staged. Even though there's a lot of people in there, it just seems very staged. They've got, obviously got strict instructions. Well, they got um around to Russia today, not, not the, you know, propaganda news channel. Um, Russia as in, in Russia. There's a channel I follow called Inside Russia. And he's, he's, he's a lovely chap, he's a Russian geezer, and he's um fled the country because, yeah, he's at risk, <laughs> big risk. And um, he can't get away with what, he's been, what he says on his channel, basically, so... Uh, He's fled the country. But uh, what's been going on over in Russia at the moment is they've been putting up these uh, signs, these billboards. I did a little video about it earlier. And um, these uh, signs of these billboards on, uh, these billboards, sorry, have written on them, uh, the borders of Russia, so, uh, extend Russia or something. Uh, you know, the, the borders of Russia end nowhere, that's it. The borders of Russia end, in Russian, obviously. And it was dated today as well on the actual billboards, and it's a, a little bit eerie. I, at first, I was thinking it's a threat towards the West, or a threat to anyone against Russia. Um, but this this guy on the Inside Russia channel, he was saying that um, he believes it's against anyone who's been defecting or people like him of his channel speaking the truth. You know can't say war can you it's not a war is it it's a special operation and all that so he's there and um i don't know where he's got i think he's gone to poland or somewhere now um he's not in russia anymore he was in russia and there's another um there's a young lad that i follow as well proskin 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 um and he's fled the country as well i think he's in thailand or somewhere like that at the moment so um anyway there's these signs go back everywhere but they've been at the airports in russia the KGB have been there, right, doing the security. But they've been them um, stopping all Russian men and interrogating them who are coming back into the country. Interrogating to, them to an extent where, um, especially if they've been out of the country for more than three months because of the you know, inscription into the Russian army. And um, I found it quite, well, a bit, a bit concerning because some of these people who are trying to get back into the country are disappearing. Nobody knows what their fate is. 
the gulag for them, I reckon. Or they'd be shot as traitors. It was Russia, isn't it? Makes you wonder. Well, it does. Right, so. Now, we've got to remember here, we've got these two joints, okay? One side's going to be dry and the other side's not. One side's going to be a domino dowel, using using my domino dowel, which is over there now. Um, and the other side, we're going to cut actual joints by hand. So we'll do those ones first. And the ones that are going to be by hand are going to be the joints where the hinges are, because that's where the most strength is required. So everything will be hanging on that face. The other face is literally just going to be the closing face of the door, or the close, um, the jam, the closing side of the door. And so you not cover door after all. So two of these, so we're going to say these two here, for instance. If, oh, hang on, is, the back, is that the face? Or was that the face? No, that's the face. That was the face. So if I'm looking at it, that's that way up. And it's going to be hung on this side. So, is it right? Yeah, it's going to be hung on this side. So, this is where the actual mortises are going to be. So I'll just put a little M on there and a little M on there, just so I know. Because that's going to be the dominoes on that end. So these ones, I can just literally cut off. Please just cut them off to that line and just wait that'll be waste. And so that's all that can all be gone. Right? Because this joint will be buttered with the domino dowels in. That yeah, but they'll be dry be a dry joint. And this side we could put the mortars on. So we're gonna cut some mortars. Now the mortars joint, let's just, just start with we'll do one at a time. Let's just start with that one. We know that's gonna be the mortars joint. Um and so it's gonna be the I don't matter, anyone will do. Anyone will do. Right, so that's going to be the top. It's going to be hinged on that side. Okay, so these two faces are going to go together. So I'm going to mark them, literally like that, across the two. And it kind of tells me they go together. Or you, or you could do, put a one and a one. But put it somewhere, you're going to cut it off. So do one. One well, more side pencil. It's the HB, they're no good. I left my pencil in there. My good pencil in there. HB are too hard for woodworking. You want two, two B or, or even softer. To be or not to be. So that's one to one. Um, so now we need to cut a mortise. There's various ways we can do it. We can cut um, a mortiser using the mortiser. So we have a mortiser over there, so we might go and use that in a minute. It might make sense. But let's mark it out first. Um, and then we'll cut the tenon, which is the bit that goes in, the, the male part, and that's the female part. Oh, getting saucy. So. We don't want that tenon going too close to that edge, because uh, it's weakening it. And they've got the width for the timber that's there, like so. So we want to cut these 50 mil deep. Now the camera over there is actually working, so I can spin that camera angle, which is that one. That is actually working. Oh, yeah. So we've got two cameras. That's handy. So what we're going to do, <laughs> let's bring it back again. We're going to um, mark about, oh, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to go down 30 mil. About 30 mil. I don't want the top of my mortise being too close up that end. The, the mortise here, on this side, can be right up the, against the edge of the timber. Now, so the tenon could go up, there could be hard up on that tenon on that side. It doesn't matter because we can put a rebate in all the way around. So it doesn't really, it really make a huge amount of difference. And there's no real load on this. Um, you could come in a little bit. But I'm going to have a bit, slightly bigger tent. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to, in the middle of that, we need to create our, um, well, our mortars. And um, there's various ways you can do it. You can use your markers. I say, not the mortgage. Mark your mortgage. Mor your mortgage. Mark your mor mortgage. Mortgage. Mortis! I've got mortgages on the brain, it's because I made a video earlier. Hello, who's Ebediah? Carpenters have naughty words like, oh, I doubt that. Oh, that's saucy, that is. Oh, dear, what do you like? Yeah. Oh, hello, walk to you, bitch. Hi, hi. We don't use them for the same reason our soldiers saw them in brothels. What? During World War II. So they were associated with sin. Really? Is that why they don't use B days? Well, that's strange. Oh, dear. Right, okay. Oh, got them at dados. I've always thought a rabbit, a rabbit, and a dado sounded dumb. <laughs> well, the thing about a dado, a dado, what we think about a dado these days, a dado technically, well, not what we think about these days, technically, a dado should always finish the top panelling. 
But these, it seems to me that people just slap a bit of wood on the wall or a little bit of, um, I don't know, wallpaper freeze and they call it a day do. But technically, if it isn't finishing on top of a panel, and if that panel is, it could even be, it could be wood or it could even be paper, but it needs to be a, some kind of panel to finish the top of the panel. Otherwise, it's a cheer rail. Remember picture rails? No? No? Skirting boards used to be that tall, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Carpenters have naughty words, oh they do. A rebate and housing. Either. We get housing for your pan panel. I, don't, I use all sorts of words. I spend too much time on my own, you see. I can't make words up as I go along, I do. It's kind of what I do. But never mind, Sally B. <laughs> so I am going to go over to the other camera once I've marked this out. So I'm going to use my marking gauge. Start as I need to know where the center is, and I can pretty much do that by eye and, and my finger, knocking things about. I keep trying to position things so you can see. So that's the, the center, and I know I want twelve. Um, well, I'm going to go for. Half inch, twelve mil, twelve point seven mil. That'd be on a half inch, width ten. And was that actually? That might be too much. I'm gonna go ten on that actually. Let's go ten. And this this particular little marking gauge is quite good because it's got it's got lots of pins, lots of pokey things. Yeah. So it's got you see on there these are moving backwards and forwards. So you can set it whatever width you want here, right? And you, then you alter your stop to suit, and they mark your piece of wood where you want your slot to be, or your mores. So if I say that, I'm going to have that. I better double check the width of the uh, the mortise, hollows of mortise, sir. Because that looks like a 10, well, no, that's half, is that half inch? No, that is, oh, no, that's 10 mil. That's a 10 mil. That's handy. So we're gonna, we'll, go, we'll go with that, whatever that is. So all I really want, then, is the centre. That's all I need, is the centre. So as long as we go with the centre, it'll be the right width. And then we'll cut the, the actual tenon. To suit the mortars. So it's going to be very simple, really, isn't it? Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. So let's go to the other camera. Oh my god, there's a load of mess. Oh my god, look at that mess. There's another light down here. I'm in such a mess. I hate being a mess. I really, really hate it. Do, 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 do. And I can't even get to the mortars for a minute. And there's bits there I haven't bolted back on yet. Ah, oh, yeah, when I was restoring. I've used it a few times actually since, though. It's actually quite good. Mm hmm. I keep taking the rubbish off and putting the rubbish bag on again. That is not rubbish, that goes with that. Now, let's just move you around so you can see. I'm coming over here. All right, well, there's the mortiser over there. All right, it's here. That's the mortiser. And hopefully, that's okay. I think you can see it. Let's have a look. Can you see the table on the mortiser? Ah, la 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 la. Oh, you can just about. I could drag it out a bit, though, couldn't I? I could bring that out a bit, that's what I do. It's on wheels. It's usually a good idea. It's on wheels. Get that out of the way. And this is gonna go that way up. And I'm, I'm basically putting the mortars in the, the end. So I want that up higher. Oh stuck. I'll pull this out in a minute. No, 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 no. Oh god, into window. If the wheels don't fall off. No, that's good. Ha, that's handy, isn't it? That's handy, Harry. Poor old Harry. Oh, he gets a rough time, doesn't he? All that money. What's he supposed to do with it all? Oh, there we go. Do, 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 do. I'll bring that down so I can just line that the point of that right down the middle. And once I've got in the right place, I won't move it until I've got all my mortars is cut. I'm happy with that. That's good. You can set the stops, but I haven't fitted them on yet. <clears throat> They're over there. I could find them when, when we were restoring it, and I found them, but I haven't put them on yet. But I don't need. I'll just do it to the lines. <clears throat> the thing is, if you had all these stops in place, or even this wood just clamped on, you can create stops. So if you do, if you can repeat it, so you, if you've done one, you can make them all the same without doing any marking, because marking takes time, doesn't it? You see. So if you can prevent the marking, the process of marking, you can so save yourself a lot. Of Aggro. I think that's in the middle. Not quite. Oh, all these little wheels. I've got to remember what they all do.
that's it back there so I'll turn it on but before I turn it on I'll I'll plug it in <laughs> another bit of woods in the way that's typical oh I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do limbo no limbo dancing no right let's plug it in there <clears throat> put that back in again Do, 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 do. Oh, ah, yeah, grease everywhere. Right. Oh, listen to it. Oh, it sounds precious. Put a wax in there, help lubricate it. I get warm, that will, in there. I get hot. Melt the wax. Now, we did sharpen this bit. I'm hoping it's going to be okay in the vine. Right. Got a bit of a dog clutch on on the arch hand handle here, so you can move up and down quite easily. <gasps> oh dear! Right, I haven't set the depth. Now I know it's fifty mil. Now you can't see it, but on this side there's a an adjuster, and as long as I, from its current position, put fifty mil gap between the stop and the actual um slot actual rail, which well, slides up and down on, it should be. Correct. I'm trying to find a rule, aren't they? Ow! So as long as I make sure you can't, I know you can't see it, but there is a gauge. I'm just going to put 50 mil because that's going to be the, the depth of my waters. It doesn't really need to be 50 mil. 40 would have done. I was in 50. But as far as you want to go, really. I don't, I don't go over depth. So I want to be able to push the glue around the joint at the same time. So, okay, so hopefully the stop works and it stops me going too deep. Oh! There's a drill inside a square hollow chisel. And that drill is clean, is basically cutting out most of the material. But the square chisel is sharp. So the stop was working. That stopped to there. So now if I come back up again. So the chisel itself is just cleaning, well, basically cutting the corners out of the round to make the round into a square. Which we'll show you in a moment. That looks, looks fairly centre-ish. Hmm. Oh. Down and again. They do want to try and take off too much at a time. And also, you've got to be careful that... You don't end up um, putting force on one side of the chisel. So something's better to try and, instead of nibbling it, try and do a full cut so the pressure's all the way around the chisel. Obviously the chisel try and bend and try and move the whole head in one direction. I have adjusted this all up, so it should, you know when we restored it, it should be okay, it shouldn't do that. And yes, you can do this a lot faster than what I'm doing it. Don't say, should you, um... A lot faster than using a mallet and a uh, chisel. Although you can obviously do it quite quickly if you're using a little spade bit or a, or a brad point bit or something like that and take the waste out first. Or a bracing bit. A bracing bit is like a hand drill. need to create two of these, one in that one there and one in that end there. Oh, go the wrong way now. Oh, not quite. Go the wrong way, there you go. The beauty about this is it creates a, you know, a perpendicular to the face. Plot. If you do it by hand, there's a, there's a risk that you could end up going a bit skew if you're not too good at it. Especially on the deeper mortises. And this is... 50 mil is reasonably deep, especially for this job. There we go. We have our first mortars. Oh, I'll be full of sawdust, it will. Oh, oh, get rid of that. We don't need that in there. No, we don't. Oh, that's it. Right, so we now have 
It's a bit of a fluffy square hole because it's pine, you, you get that. But at least we've got a square hole. Or a round drill bit, effectively. And anyway, we need to mark the other end. Because this one is the one that's going to have both, well, both are going to be, uh, well, as you can see, they're both going to be mortises, mortars and tenons. So I need to mark the other end, which is the bigger bit of wood. Just that one. Now, I don't need to mark the centre this time. All I need to work out is whereabouts I want it to stop. It's going to start here, at this end, you know, on the inside edge. And then it can finish, well, it can finish further down. Because that's a one hell of a wide mortar. So we don't, um, ten inside. We don't need a ten in that wide. Or, we can create two tenons. So we can do a double whammy. <laughs> that's not the technical term, just so you know. So... It doesn't have to be exact, I can just say, oh, okay, it could be that and that, maybe that's a bit wide. So, or we can use a rule, such as that. Let's go for 40 mil. No, 50 mil tenon, 20 mil space, 50 mil tenon. 50 mil tenon, so let's go have a mortise in there. And then I'm going to have a, a gap. Uh, no, not a gap. <laughs> then we can have a gap. Then we'll go for 40 mil tenon. Just to be awkward, like so. So I have two mortises, one there, one there. We could pretty much do the same again, but I don't need to mark centres or anything like that because it's already set up now. Oh, I forgot. Press the button. There you go. Do 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 do. Right, so hopefully I can get some of this jointed out because uh, I need to walk the dogs as well. Right, so it's a bit quick this time. Let's see if we put your uh, pocket up. Uh, if you go too quick, what you'll do is you'll end up uh, grabbing the wood as you come back up again. Uh, try and pull the wood with it. See if... uh, okay, now we can go now. There you go. You can see it can be quite quick. If I can't see my stop mark. There. That's one 40 mil mortars. We're going to go there and then we can do the 50 mil mortars. This is such an overkill for the job. If I was Norman Abram, I'll be getting out my biscuit joiner and I'll just be you know, cutting my old biscuits, I will. You know, join all my biscuit joiner. A Dewalt biscuit joint, exactly the same as the one I got on the wall over there. That's what Norm Abram were doing. New, y New Yankee workshop. It's not... A, they're not designed for that purpose, making doing joints on doors. Though. No. They're too skinny, too shallow, and too weak. Don't be wrong, I do like the... Uh, uh, biscuit joint, huh? But it has its uses, and they're great for panel joining and stuff like that. In fact, just for alignment, just some internal stuff. Not external, but it's internal. So there you go. So it's definitely quick using that, isn't it? So now we've got mortises on both ends. See? Mortises on that end, or two mortises on that end, and one on that end. So we've got a double tenon to cut and a single tenon. So hopefully we can do that and um, get that jointed up there then. Right. Back over here we go. It's a good machine, that is. It really is. You really need to give us a glossary of carpentry. A glossary. What well, terms? Could do that, can we? That'd be quite fun. Well, the other thing that gets me, if you're talking about glossary, <laughs> is um, which one's which? That's the mortise. So that's that one. Um, what gets well annoys me somewhat is other words. You know, you know when you put all that plaster rubbish in the top corner of your house, in your rooms, and it, oh, it make it all look pretty, you see. It doesn't, it just makes it look stupid. But yeah, when you put like, all that coving in the corners of your, of your ceilings, and um, they call it coving, right? It's actually not a cove. No. It's just, what's happened is over the years, words have become adapted. We've got so used to saying them to associate with a certain thing. It's become the norm, and it's not right. Just like I said about the dado rail. It's not a dado rail, it's a chair rail, unless it finishes the top of a panel. But a cove is actually a scotia. Yeah. 
and a cove is a certain type of moulding. The moulding that you see, where you see all this plaster stuff, you know, that stuff you buy for the brick, um, the brick hose or your um, DIYs in the UK, which is plaster and like a paper finish on it, or you get this polystyrene rubbish as well, don't you? And uh, that, that moulding is actually Scotian. It's not a cove moulding. So it's not a cove. No. Do, 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 do. So that one's going to go in there. And that one's going to have the mortises in for that one. So now I need to mark where these mortises are going to go. So what, we, what, what I'm going to do is make it life easy for yourself. I remember, well, I haven't cut this to length yet. So it might be a good idea, actually, just to cut that to length before I, you know, true the end up to 50 mil. So, which I'll do on the radio, I'm sorry, over there. Unfortunately, oh, I just need to trim it. So, it's pretty much there. I'll just straighten it up. So we need to try, we could cut this by hand this bit. Could do it on the radial arm saw. Might do the big one on the radial arm saw maybe. Um, but other than that, we're going to do it with the... Uh, by hand, with a saw. All right. Hopefully I can do a good job. Everybody watching. All right, so this is how... You're doing this just for the purpose of marking it. Just to make it life easy for myself. So I've got that set in there at the right height. I can just lay that on there like so. And now I can just grab my square. And I can mark... Whereabouts that's got to go. I know the tenon is about 10 millimeters uh, thick. So I'll just check the width, the width of this, which is a dual, just actually just shy of 10 mil. So we can clean that with a chisel. Yeah, so it t yeah, 10 mil. Do you know what's pretty shy? It's because I had to grind that um, hollow chisel up, and it's probably got a little bit smaller than 10 mil. Or maybe it's a 3.8, it might be Imperial. That's a possibility. It was in 3.8, very, very... 3.8, let's have a look at that, 10 mil. Mm, yes, it is. What that was? 10 mil. 3.8. Yeah, 3.8 is fraction... Yeah, it's a 3.8 chisel. It's not a 10 mil over, that's a 3.8. That's imperial. Anyway, let's mark that across there, which is done. So now I just need to mark the centre. Obviously, it's quite important to get that in the middle. So, uh, that's a rule. And that's 25 mil. So that's 12 and a half mil. That looks pretty darn, well, nearly. It's just that side of that. There you go. 12 and a half, 12 and a half. Um, there we do use your um, marking gauge to find the middle. You just do that. And do that. And then, then literally put it in the middle of your two marks. So I've created two, two little dots on there. And now I'm just going to put it in the, in the middle of it. So it's near as damn it. The other way is you can make yourself one of these. Well, actually on the video, I had to make this on the, it's on the channel. And this is literally a centre finder. Now, it's not just a centre finder. It's actually a, it's centre finder and it's actually a marking gauge. Just like this is a marking gauge. That's a marking gauge. And made it as a block of wood. And it's got two sawn off shotguns. I mean, two sawn off... Um, Nails, and it's got like a little. Uh, it's just a plasterboard screw, a little bugle head plasterboard screw, just poking through to create the point. And that is dead in the centre of those two bits of metal, of those two sawn, sawn offs. And then we just mount that on there like so, and we just drag that forward like so, and that will mark the centre for you. But we're using this, and then from that, I know I need to go around five mil either side it was actually just under actually which you can use this again we could use this again I, I know i'm doing things more than twice but i'm just trying to show you so we can use this into this mortar's head to get our to get that correct and then just tying it up there Just adjust, and now that is an exact for that face. It's in exactly the same place as that one. So now all I've got to do is that. These are all just, just different ways you can you can mark it out. And the boot about using 
your um got to be right across there because I'll have to cut that out as well. All right. The boot about you can make it darker if you want, should be a bit easier. You can actually use that all the way around. And you do that so you can actually when you come to using your hand saw, remember you always go from the same face. Always work from the same face. So when you're using your hand saw you can see exactly uh then you can see that you're going down at 90 degrees right so i've marked that all the way around now you can cut that you've got, you've got a choice here you can cut that tenon in one go and then cut off the excess that we don't need is what which, which i'm going to do or you can uh Cut this bit out first because we don't need that because it goes onto that area here of that piece of wood there you see. So there's no mortars there. Um, and just, just cut that bit. I'm actually going to do the wider faces first. The other one, the bigger one, we're going to cut using the radial arm saw. Uh, don't know if you're able to get your camera over there or anything. Uh, so do, 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 do. I'm going to cut the cheeks first. You don't have to, you can cut whatever bits we like first, to be honest. Tell you what, the camera's there, so let's bring it that way around. We're going to cut it that way using a tenon saw. Uh, I need a largest tenon saw for that because I need to be able to make sure I can cut all the way down. Uh, oh, that one, nope, that one do. That's 150mm. It's a bit finer cut. It's either that one or I have another back saw here. I say back saw, they've got the brass back on them. So you see that was much deeper. I might use this one actually, it's gonna give me more control. And this one's a Tizak. They're all self sharpening as in I sharpen them myself. So we're just going to get started. We've got to try and make sure that we're coming down perpendicular from that face all the way down. Bringing yourself around and round and round. You could do this all with a chisel if you want to do. If you really felt that obsessed. Do 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 do. Something about hand tools. Like therapy. Apart from the carpal tunnel. And I'm cutting. Down the grain, which is actually harder than cutting across the grain. You think going with the grain would be easier, but it's not. When you're going with the grain, you need a lot of set in the saw. And these saws don't have a lot of set in the set, where the teeth are facing either way. Some people are called a rip saw. You could have lots of saws set up, so, so they cut in that fashion. Then you need lots of saws. Although I have got lots of saws, to be honest. Some of these saws, some of these old tools I bought do, some I bought second hand, all gifted. You know, it's surprising what you can get you know, from people who don't know what they got. It's like the saw got on um, the end there, you can probably see it, the one with the light handle. They don't normally got a dark handle, but that's a distant. That's an American saw. And um they're brilliant. They were like the, they were, well, I suppose they were the Rolls Royce of hand saws, you know, good bit of steel, enough flex, but not too much. And even then, you've got different saws doing different jobs. You've got, you know, panel saws like that one, which are um, for cross cutting and some for ripping. Generally speaking, if you've got a saw for ripping, it'll have bigger teeth and they'll have more set. So they'll, they'll generally cut a wider um, kerf, you know, the width of the cut, the thickness of the cut, or the thickness of the blade. Dee -dee 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 -dee. This one needs sharpening. Maybe that's another job we can do. Do a bit of sharpening. Hand saw sharpening. I think I actually did that once, you know, live. Or was it just a video idea? It might have been a video. I actually find it harder or worse to cut tenons in pine than I do actually um, hardwood. 
because the wood's more sticky and it's more fluffy and it's just not so um that looks pretty accurate that looks good to me so next what we've got to do is we've got to cut the shoulders let's leave the shoulders which i'll show you now but how we're going to do that it's a bit awkward because i've got to do it at an angle i'm going to use a bench hook anyone who went to school <laughs> and did woodwork probably know probably seen these before this is a bench hook just one way of doing it and uh, just uh yeah it gives you something to hold your piece of timber make it a little bit easier you can use a vice if you want could even use a hold down you know if you've got one which i have the only problem now is the cameras got to get it close. i'm gonna put my button away and i probably hmm That's a problem. Can I put it in that way round? That'd be an interesting idea. I've never done that before. It's a bit of an odd thing to do, but there you go. Oh, it's oh that'd be right. I'll do it. Anyway, I'll go use this bench hook. <laughs> I'll use this saw this time. And you can use your stop on your bench hook and just line it up with your piece of wood like so. And now we're, going to, we're just gonna cut these shoulders. Oh, that was sharp. Be careful you're overcut. You don't want to cut into your tenon. There you go, that's one. One shoulder gone. Flip it over. Woohoo! And <laughs> do the other one. The other shoulder. There you go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Check make sure the microphone ain't gone off. I bet Caroline's gonna go and walk the dogs herself in a minute. Won't be surprised. Just say she would to be a fair. There you go. All right, so all we need to do now is a little bit of chisel work on it. Did you do? Ooh, oh, no, 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 forgetting something. I've lost my mark, so I know where it was, so. Right, so now I've got to cut that one. Because it's got this is a stop ten. It's not a through ten, so it's not going all the way through the bit of wood. It's only going in fifty mil. I don't need to. I'm not gonna mark that. I'm just gonna just cut it. Not too far. Yeah. Start on the side of the shoulder before, I, and I'll work my way round. This way, I'm, I'm at less risk of damaging the shoulder cut. So I'm using the shoulder as a guide. So hopefully, once I've cleaned it up with chisel, it's probably a bit tight now, I imagine. If it's not, I'll leave it. Yeah, these cleaned up with chisel. Right, we can do that. In the voice, I'll use a hold. Use a hold down, one's got record hold downs. Do, 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 do. These are brilliant, these things are. I bought them second hand actually, those things, uh, but they are really good. A nice sharp chisel. Have I got my. Got nice and sharp now? Well, that'll do. Oh, it's very sharp. So I'm going to use my Robert Sorby. Oh, got to use your Robert Sorby occasionally, you know. So, I'll tell you what, let's spin it around so you can see a bit better. My pairing. You could use a pairing chisel. Pairing chisels like one of these long chisels, like that big long chisel, and uh, the idea is you can reach across a joint. But this is a little joint, so we just got to pe peel that off the back corner there, back edge. There's nothing problem with that, it's going to be a bit, it's going to keep moving, isn't it? All right, 
Okay, so. <laughs> Pine is not my favourite timber, it really isn't. Oak can be a bit of a bind at times, you can get some quite figured wood. Chestnut is actually really easy to work. The grain is similar to oak, but it's a lot lighter. Um, nearly there. It's a lot, yeah, the timber itself is a lot lighter, but you can stain that. Um, and chestnut che is cheaper, but also it's sustainable. Because re re chestnut is regenerative in the sense that you cut a chestnut tree down, it will shoot from the bottom. So basically what you'll be doing is coppicing that tree. So, um, yeah, yeah. With chestnut, that is, which is obviously a great idea. So just peeling them off there like that. Obviously your tools are going to be sharp. That's why I do a lot of... Yeah, I'll show you a lot when I'm doing sharpening and stuff. Because if it needs sharp, it doesn't work, is it? It's not going to do the job it needs to do. So hopefully that will go in there now. There you go. That's... Oh, we're not going off. <laughs> Bang! Things about that. So look at that. So that is the joint. And that is a mortise. Yeah? And tenon. So that's the tenon. And that's the mortise. So that's going to be glued screwed and what have you not screwed but glued maybe put a peg in it yeah so into that bit there so you basically you put a dowel or a peg well it's a peg actually you, you put your peg in your joint so when people say oh go put a dowel in it no it's pegging and there's a particular way of doing that actually not a lot of people not a lot of people know not people do this anymore you don't actually when you you don't just put the joint together like so and drill straight through and put your peg in no what you do is you drill your hole in here first you mark where the hole is. You mark where you just slightly off centre. So when you drive your peg in, that's why it's not a dowel. You drive your peg in. It looks like a dowel because it's the same as a dowel really. It's round. It's a round bit of wood. So you drive it, and what it does is it pulls that joint together. That's what it does, and that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> All too often I say, and I've done it myself loads of times. To be honest, if, it, if I feel it doesn't matter too much. Um, I'll stick my, you know, this jewel straight through and whack a peg, peg right, right through. There's a problem with that as well because you can get breakout from the opposite face. So, um, yeah, so that's our first joint. And I've got to think about the second one. I was going to do it over there, but I might actually still do it by hand, actually, because that worked out quite nicely. Don't take long, does it? Also, we know how. Don't take long. So, should we do it by hand? Or... I think I can't put a camera over there, you see, the cameras aren't working. Anyway, let's see what he's saying. Hello, Bernard. We need to zoom in on some of the, de the delicate... I know, it's not easy when you kind of... I d I'm having camera problems. I, I had five cameras set up, and only two are working. This one, and that one. They're the only two working. It's, it's very, very annoying. So the overhead camera isn't working anymore. As you see, it's just black. Um... That's the regular arm saw. It's not working now. And that's the well, one I was moving about for the table saw. That isn't working now. So um, I will try and get on top of it, but zooming in without me dragging the cameras closer. And that camera that's working at the moment is on an arm. I can't get it any... That is the closest I can get. And I can't zoom in because we're using web, um, webcams. Um, and obviously I can't be spending a fortune on HDMI cameras in here. I just can't. I ain't got the money. So it's a bit of a, you know, it's a, bit of a tricky one. And also, you need. Oh, if I was to put HDMI cameras, I do have some HDMI cameras. One thing is, um, I'd need to get a capture card. And a capture card, you need an Elgato, really. And they can do up to four camera inputs. Or either that or an, or an ATM Mini. But I, the capture cards are at two or three hundred quid. And, or an ATM Mini, say five hundred. You know, but that does actually brought, does a streaming for you. So that you stream directly from the ATM Mini, which is really good because everything is done in the device. Whereas my computer can't really cope with it. So the other option, obviously, is to get another computer. So this is everything I've been... As you know, I've already been... Bought, God knows how many flipping cables. I think I've bought eight cables so far in here. Just so I can get from one place to another. And they've all got to be high-speed cables. So it just adds up, you know. And I don't earn anything on this channel. It's monetized, but I don't get any views. You know, like at the moment, we've only got... What, about ten people watching at the moment? Oh, how many people are there? I've got 15 people here at the minute. So, um, it's not, well, 
Did you walk dogs, did you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. My missus, she's over, she's coming here. This is a man cave. Men only. Not that sort of men only. No, no, that's all saucy. What, what, you, 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 this is a man's space. What are you doing in there? <laughs> that wasn't misogynistic, was it? Oh, no, 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 no. Not me. What? Oh, promenade the shin. Oh, go walk the dogs. Right, okay, we'll do that next time then. Because I'm going to have to go now and walk the doggies. I've been told. You see, I'm under the thumb. Do you know that? I'm under the thumb. I tell you, I get bullied, I do. Do you feel sorry for me? No? I do think you did. You like that, aren't you? Anyway, I'm going to call that it anyway for the moment because I need to take care of context. I need to go and walk my doggies and uh, we'll carry on with this later. So I think what I'll do is just, if I can just come in here and just do little short streams like that, I think it'll work quite well because I keep going too long. What happens is when you want to do live, I get a bit carried away. And really on the other channel, I need to think about... I was three hours the other night, and then I went over to Discord server and spoke to Mad Monk. I spoke to various others. I think a bit, no, well, it didn't stop until like three o'clock in the morning. The time I went to bed, it was like half past three. So it was um, a bit of a late one. And it's, it's getting to be a bad habit. It's just, uh, your head take it, buddy. And it um, doesn't really, well, it doesn't make you very healthy, does it? So I'm going to. Oh no, I'm good. I will sort it out, um, Bernard, but um, I'll, I'll do it by, bit by bit. And besides, I need to find out, or work out what's going on with this blooming computer. You know, if. Uh, well, first thing, I, I, before I can actually do anything to get the cameras closer, I need to get the cameras to work! Reliably! I've got two cameras that seem to always work okay, and the rest. Uh, I'll put all these cards in this machine as well, USB 3 cards, which have their own power supplies. And they're not working properly, properly so it's, a, oh no, it's painful. Anyway, that's not your problem, that's my problem. I'll get over it, I'm sure. I'll find a solution. Uh. <laughs> so we will. We, yeah, I get your point, though. We, we, will, we will definitely do that. It'd be nice to get really close, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, so one bottle of whiskey and a hangover the next morning. Mad Monk was referring to uh, uh, the live stream the other night, and probably uh, <laughs> we were on the Discord for a while. And yes, it was um, that was a late one, wasn't it, Mad Monk? That was nice though. That was quite yeah. Chat to new people and all that, which is always good. And um, yeah, that was quite pleasant. So anyway, I am going to say goodbye because I can hear the missus putting the collars on the dogs, <laughs> or the leads on the dogs, or lead on one dog. Generally, Wally, the others generally just run about. They're fine. But uh, it's time for me to go, so I'm going to say ta-ta, you know. So ta-ta.